What's up my piano friends, Zach Evans here again and today I want to talk about the dreaded topic of networking. And I know as musicians and especially as piano players, a lot of us just hate the concept of going into a random room of strangers, talking to people, networking and getting gigs. But if you ask me and if you ask a lot of professional musicians, I actually think as bad as it sounds, networking is more important than your actual piano ability in terms of your ability to get gigs and get paid off of your music. So if you're interested in making a living off of your music, networking is absolutely critical. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna tell you about how to get over that awkward stage. I'm gonna tell you the exact say, thing to say to get into conversation, tell you how to continue the conversation, how to get the contact details. After that, I'm gonna talk about the one thing rule, which is the most important rule when it comes to networking. And then I'm gonna, at the end, I'm gonna tell you about how to choose networking venues that make your job a lot easier. And just a simple thing as choosing a different place to network can make your job that much easier and, and save you a lot of time and frustration in the long run. All right, let's get started. First things first, you walk into a big networking event, we all have that same feeling, right? That kind of, ah, uh, feeling, oh man, this is awkward, I have to talk to these strangers. Now, one of the biggest mistakes I made when I first started networking, because you know, I moved to Nashville, I knew one person there, and he wasn't even a close friend. We're kind of, you know, we're friends, but we're outer circle friends. And I had to meet all these new musicians to try to make a living off music. So I went to these networking events. I felt super awkward. And the first big mistake I made is I'd go to these events, and I'd go up to a group where there's like four or five people talking because I felt safer. I felt like, oh, I can go up to this group. I won't have to talk that much because there's a lot of people in the group, and it'll just be easier. And what ended up happening is I would go up, I wasn't really warmed up, and I'd kind of, oh, hey guys, how, how's it going? And I'd kind of be like lingering on the outside, and I, I basically came off a little bit creepy and a little bit the quiet guy that doesn't really say anything. You don't want to come off as that guy, obviously. Instead, what I recommend doing, go in, go in the networking event, look around for the people that are feeling as awkward as you are. Right? Look around for, for the guy that's holding his drink like this and kind of looking around. And th that guy will connect with you way faster than someone who's already like talking to everybody. So, what you want to do is go up to that guy. And instead of trying to network with him and trying to get something out of the interaction, you want to be very casual and just develop a bond with him. Think about it as you're not networking, you're just making friends and having a good time. And that attitude and that mindset will actually make your networking efforts a lot more successful. Okay, so you walk up to this guy. Instead of saying right away, oh, so what do you do, what do, you do in music? Um, asking music questions. Empathize and bond with him first. So I would always walk up and just be like, man, I, I'm not going to lie to you. Like, I'm so awkward at these networking events. And then almost every time, they're like, oh, I know, me too. Like, I just want to sit in my room and play guitar and now, and now I have to like come to these events and like talk to people. Boom, instant connection and every time it works because you can tell that they're feeling the exact same thing you're feeling. So boom, you get that quick bond. Next thing I always say is, so what do you do, man? What's your thing? And I like saying that better. What do you do? What's your thing? It's very casual, right? If you come up and you're like, so what are your goals in music? Uh, uh, what, what are you trying to get out of this networking event? It's too like, it's too serious. You know, it's too networky and not just casual. So if you just, hey, what do you do, man? What's your thing? Very casual. You want everything to just seem like a normal social interaction and don't try to network. Another thing I wanna talk about is body language. So if this person, let's say the person you're talking to is facing forward, right, facing this way, you don't wanna face him directly because it comes off very kind of confrontational. You wanna come almost like at the side. So if he's here facing this way, I'm almost like this, and I'm talking to him, talking, but we're kind of looking out at the whole networking event. It just makes it, makes it come off more casual and kind of more, uh, more chill. So, right, you come up at this angle. Oh, man, I hate networking. Oh, he hates networking, too. Um, or not hates networking, but I feel so awkward. He feels so awkward. Boom, so what do you do? You know, what's your thing? So now he's going to respond with maybe, uh, yeah, I play guitar, right? Now, if you've read the book, how to win friends and influence people. I got a lot of stuff from networking out of that book. It's a great read. And one of the things they say is be interested in the other person more, more so than talking about yourself. 
And that's 100% true. But I think the part they missed in that is you still have to relate to what they're talking about. Because w- when I first read that book, I would go up to people. Oh, so yeah, what, what do you do? What's your thing? Oh, I play guitar. Oh, cool, man. You know, what, what genre do you play? Oh, I'm in a metal band. Oh, sweet, a metal band. Um, yeah, w- what parts of town do you play in? And it came off, for some reason, it doesn't come off like we're bonding. It comes off like I'm interviewing him with these questions. So the formula is, he says something, you relate to it in any way you can. Sometimes you won't be able to, but usually you'll have some way to relate. And then you ask another question. And then he answers it. Then you relate. Then you ask another question. He answers it. Boom. And eventually he'll start asking you questions and it'll get, it'll get easier. Or he or she, I should say. Um, so it might look like something like this. Like, oh, so what do you do, man? What's your thing? And oh, yeah, I'm a guitar player. Oh, cool, man. I, I just started learning guitar. I literally got four chords. And you know that F chord with the bar? I just cannot get that to save my life. Boom. I mean, that's, that's legit. That's actually true about me. They'd be like, oh, I know that the F's, the F's the hardest chord. And then, oh, so what do you do? You play uh, what genre? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm in a metal band. Oh, badass, dude. One of my friends in Oshkosh, uh, he's in a metal band. They tour. Have you heard of blah, blah, blah? Oh, no, I haven't heard of that one. Oh, cool. Man. I didn't even know there was a metal scene in Nashville. Like, literally, I thought it was just a bunch of country guys running around. What, like, bars do you play at? See, it's like, it's like, it's a relate. So it's, oh, yeah, you know, I didn't even know there's metal in Nashville. Like, I'm relating to him because he's probably thinking, yeah, when I first moved to Nashville, I didn't know that either. Boom, we play at this bar. Oh, dude, I walk past that bar all the time. That's uh, in Midtown, right? Right by, like, Winners and Losers. Boom. It's relate and then ask a question. And then eventually... Once you cycle that enough times, he's going to be like, this guy's cool. He's not greedy. He's not trying to network with me. He's just a cool guy. And that's when he'll start asking me questions. So he, and usually it's, oh, so what do you do in music? Now, when they ask you that, you do want them to know that you're looking for gigs, but you don't want to ask for gigs, right? So I might be like, oh, uh, yeah, I just moved here from Wisconsin. Yeah, I'm actually, I play piano. Just trying to look for gigs here and stuff like that. And it's nice to put in something extra like, oh, I'm just moved here from Wisconsin. Right? Give them a bunch of things that they can relate on. Don't just say, oh, I play piano. Maybe they can't relate on that. But I just moved here from Wisconsin. I play piano. I'm just started looking for gigs. Four things. So now they, it gives them more hooks to hook onto where they could be like, oh, my friends are from Wisconsin. What part of town? I've just, I, I just got back from there. Or maybe, oh, yeah, I just moved here too. You can relate on that. Or, oh, yeah, uh, one of my good buddies plays piano. What kind of piano do you play? Or, uh, yeah, I'm just looking for gigs, too. I'm in the same boat as you. Give them a lot of things to hook onto. And it just keeps the conversation flowing a lot more naturally. And I know some of this seems kind of um, convoluted, like, oh, I have this formula for talking to people. And if you're a natural extrovert, by all means, you could probably just go up and wing it. But if you're like me, and a lot of piano players are naturally introverted and naturally very analytical, you might need some kind of structure to at least get you started in the conversation. All right, so then you talk for a while, get their contact details, and usually after you talk to the first person, the rest of the night is a lot easier because you're just warmed up, you're flowing, you had a good interaction with one person. So now when you go up to another person, another group, you don't necessarily have to do the whole, oh man, like I feel so awkward at networking events. You can kind of just walk up like, hey, how's it going? How's your night going? You guys look like fun. Yeah, what do you, what do, you do? What's, what's your thing? Oh, sweet. But you see what I mean? Like, it's like once, it's just like piano, right? Once you warm up on your scales, it makes your song easier. Once you warm up socially, it makes the rest of the night easier. And you can just walk up with, hey, what's up, guys? You guys look like fun. Or uh, what's up? How you guys doing tonight? Anything very basic like that. All right. Next step, this is the most important step, I believe, in networking. It sounds creepy. I know it sounds creepy. You have to make a spreadsheet. You have to do it. It's not creepy. You don't have to show anybody it. You have to put everybody you networked with. You have to put their name, something so you will recognize them, like uh, Chris, swoop bangs guy, guitar guy, and then one thing that you can talk about next time you see them, right? So he's in a metal band. Boom. So, you know, you put uh, in a metal band called blah, blah, blah. And then also their social media profile. So usually if they give you a card, it'll have like their Facebook page. Now what you need to do 
is go to their Facebook page and actually listen to their music. Don't be one of those networking people that just comes up and like, oh yeah, like I love your band. And it's like, you've never even listened to my band. You know what I mean? Don't be one of the fake networking people. Actually listen to their music on Facebook and find one thing you like about it, right? Maybe you hate metal music, but you're like, oh dude, that chord progression in the second song was really good. You have to find the one thing. I call it the one thing rule. One thing that you can for sure talk to them about next time you see them. And here's why this is so important. This is what used to happen to me all the time. I go to a networking event, I meet somebody, we'd have a good conversation, we exchange contact info, then a week would pass, I see them at the next networking event. Here's what always happened. I would see them, but I didn't make a spreadsheet back then. So I'd be like, oh man, I talked to that dude last time. Uh, I, I don't want to talk to him this time though, because I don't really remember his name. And then I'm going to end up in this conversation like, oh yeah, hey, what's your name again? Oh yeah, yeah, that's right, Zach. Uh, what's, oh yeah, you're the, the guitar player? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, so like, what kind of band are you playing? Oh yeah, you already told me. It's a, right, it's like, oh, that's just awkward. And I would avoid the people that I already had some contact with, which those are the best people to network with, the people you've already talked to in a previous environment. And I would avoid all those people because I didn't have, I didn't remember things about them. But if you have the spreadsheet and you have the one thing, now the next networking event, you walk up and it's like, hey, what's up, Chris? How's it going? Dude, I, sorry, my camera cut out for a second. Uh, so then you walk up the next time, you have your one thing, and now you can say, hey, what's up, Chris? Hey, I checked out your band on Facebook. Dude, that second song, the, the part where it goes into the bridge, that chord progression, dude, that was killer, man. Like, what chords were that? I'm like really curious because I'm trying to compose. Boom. And you give them a very specific compliment. Don't, please don't be the good job guy. I call it the good job guy. It's the guy that comes up. Hey man, I checked out your band. Good job. Good job is the most generic compliment. It literally means absolutely nothing because literally half the people, they might not have even seen any of your videos, any of your band, listen to anything. And they say, oh, good job. It's generic. It doesn't, and how are they supposed to respond to that? Oh, thanks. That's it. There's nothing to hook onto. But if you have something specific, you walk up, boom, like imagine how you would feel, right? You create this Facebook page, you spend all this time creating this Facebook page, making this music, recording it, putting it on your page. And then someone comes up, oh yeah, good job. As opposed to someone comes up, hey man, I checked out your Facebook page. Dude, I loved your, your piano composition, the one in D minor. Yeah, what is, the, uh, what is the chord when you go into the outro? Because like that one, it was like different, it hit me. You see, how, you see how that feels better? It feels like this person actually cares about me. And when you do this, you do need to find something that you genuinely like about their music. Because if you try to fake it, it's gonna come off like obvious, you know what I mean? Like even saying this right now, it probably comes off a little bit fake because I'm not using a real example with a real person. Um, so find something you actually like and, and, then, and then say that next time you see them. And here's the best part. This is when your networking goes from this to like this is after like three or four weeks of this. What happens is you'll have, you'll start to figure out which people are the regulars, right? Which people come to all the events. And then there's some people that come, they come for one time, then they don't come for a month and then they come for another one. And the regulars, you'll start becoming friends with them. And this is the, the really cool thing that happens. Now you walk in, you don't have to go, you don't have to be the awkward guy looking for someone to talk to. Now you walk in and you're like, hey, what's up, Chris? How you doing, man? How's the band going? Very, very just like, and he'd be like, oh yeah, man, it's good. Blah, blah, blah. Talk for a while. Boom. Now you go to the next guy you know. Hey, Dan. What's up, dude? Hey, you missed last week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No excuses, bro. Right? And it's like little inside jokes with these people that you already know. And guess what? Now everyone around you sees you go up to four people in a row and you're just like cool with them. And you have little inside jokes and you're already friends. It makes it look like you know everybody. It makes you look like the man or, or the woman. You know, like you walk in, you know the whole people. You're, it makes you look so cool that everybody is going to want to network with you. And everybody's going to be coming up to you. And when you go up to people, they want to network with you because they know it, it, it's this perception that you have all these contacts all over the place. So that's the point you have to get to. But it sucks because so many people give up after one networking event. And I know so many people that go to one, they feel awkward, uh, and then they just never go to another one. 
Or they go to the second one and they make the mistake I made where they didn't remember anything. And then it's like, ah, this is going to be awkward. I'm not going to talk to anybody I know. And they never hit that hockey stick point where you start to really know people around the networking event and build like real friends and not just networking people, but people you actually genuinely, like you come in there, you're like happy to see them because you have little inside jokes, you know, uh, uh, you have little, uh, little things that you like to talk about. And then another good point is when you see these people really show them love, especially if it's like the third or fourth time you see them, right? If you just walk up like, Hey, how, how's it going, Chris? Cool, man. I'm glad your band's doing well. It's not the same as like, hey, what's up, bro? Boom. Give him, show him some love. Give him a little pat on the back. Hey, how's the band doing? Hey, that's right. Smile. Boom. Smile. Contact. Physical contact. High five. Little hug. You know, it kind of depends on on your age range. You know, if uh, I think the young younger people typically do, it's like a handshake thing and then like a little hug. You know, if you're, I don't know, I don't know what different age ranges do, but basically, if you can get some kind of physical contact. That's always better than not having the physical contact, but really show them that love. Like you're excited to see them because they're your friend. You know what I mean? Like show them that energy. Boom. Okay. So that's the basics of like the, the micro of how networking works. Now, one big thing is if you pick locations that make it easier, networking events that make it easier, you can literally, I mean, it's such a simple thing to change. You might as well pick easy locations so you can network better. So there's basically three types of networking events, three main types. There's piano meetup groups and piano meetups. There's uh, normal networking events, which is just like we come here to network as musicians. And then there's like singer, songwriter nights. Some people call them open mic nights. That's where, you know, everybody goes up and they have a chance to play a song. And then the next person goes up and then the next person. Now, ironically, the piano networking events are actually probably the worst for actually getting gigs. Because think about it. I mean, if they had any gigs available, they would probably be taking them because they want the gig. Uh, I love piano meetup groups. It's always fun to meet piano players and exchange ideas. But in terms of actual networking, don't expect to get many gigs from these piano meetup groups. Second type is the actual networking events. Now, these events are great, but they're still not as good as the singer-songwriter nights. And I've honestly gotten most of my gigs from these singer-songwriter nights, or some people call them open mic nights. And the reason is you have the ability to demonstrate your piano skills, right? And all these other ones, in the normal networking event, you just have to tell people, oh yeah, I play piano. Yeah, I've been playing for this many years. But you don't get to show them. Whereas if you actually have a a singer-songwriter night, you get up on stage and you actually play something. And the little secret to this, some people hate this, if you use ninth chords, if you don't know what ninth chords are, uh, I have a, it's called the secret sauce left hand pattern. You can just look it up on YouTube and it's a very simple ninth chord pattern you can start using right away. But basically it's a certain um, chord type that makes everything sound more emotional. And if you use this, I just know from experience, more people will come up and talk to me. More people will ask me about gigs if I use a ninth chord in the song I'm playing. And now the reason that these songwriter nights are great is because it's so easy to talk to people. Because, I mean, your opener is literally, hey, I really liked your song. Boom, specific compliment. And just like we're talking about with the other ones, give a specific compliment. Don't walk up, hey man, I liked your song. Good job. No, good job is like the worst thing you can say. Walk up and while everybody's performing, you know, have your iPhone open and actually write notes and actually find at least one thing in everybody's song that you like. I was in Nashville. It's a lot of country music. I'm not a huge country music guy, but country music has some of the best storytelling lyrics of any genre. Probably of probably the best of any genre. So I could always hook onto something like, hey, dude, that lyric in the verse when you're like, blah, 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 dude, that hit me. Cause like my grandma was like, I don't know, just however, however it impacted me, I have something specific that makes them actually feel good as opposed to just, oh, good job. So those are the best events to go to. Now, two other things that are like super important. Staying consistent is huge because if you come to one and you don't come to the next one a month later, it's like you're already, even if you have the spreadsheet thing, it's like they're not going to really remember you that much. You kind of remember them, but you more of just basing off your spreadsheet, you don't really remember it. And it's really hard to develop bonds with people if it's that far away. So if you can 
choose weekly events. My favorite was there's a singer-songwriter night at Cafe Coco in Nashville every single week. Singer-songwriter night, boom, boom, boom. You go every week and you start developing your regulars and you start becoming real friends with them. Second thing, you wanna come early and stay late. I know it sucks, I know it's a huge time commitment, but the best networking happens before the event and after the event, when there's less people around and you're just talking to the couple people that are there and, and there's not as many people coming in networking and it's just easier at the very beginning and the very end for whatever reason. Um, so that's a good point too. All right, I hope you like this video. If you want more tips like this, you can sign up for the free Become a Piano Superhuman course. Uh, I'll put the link somewhere in the video. And I really hope you enjoyed this. I know networking is kind of like, uh, and kind of awkward, but I promise you it's a skill like any other skill. And the more you do it, the more you just hit it every single day, the better and the better you're gonna get at talking to people, networking, and, and getting more gigs. Hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Peace out and happy practicing.